All right, and now share my screen. Okay, can everybody see my screen now? Yay. Yep. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit about component loaders um, and data gets into those component loaders from two different ways. One is you load it directly there and one is it comes from the bulk loader, um, depending on how you put data into either data entry or the main bulk loader. Um, and many of you may not be aware, but um, Dusty uh, removes data from those component loaders when it gets really old. And there's some issues that he filed. There's links here in the agenda where he recently removed some data that was over a year old. Um, and sometimes this can be because you put something in there and then decided you didn't want to load it, but you never deleted it. Um, but it might be that you think that data is loaded and it's not. So um, I would kind of encourage everybody to go look at these issues and see if you had any data there um, that maybe you think is loaded, but it's not. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how to keep up with this. And the first thing is the component loader. Um, and actually I shared the wrong screen, so let me try again. So in the tools directory under stats and status, there's this little thing called component loader status which maybe many of you have looked at and maybe a bunch not so much, but this is a list of all the individual component loaders. I won't scroll through it and make everybody sick, um, but it has the name of the tool, which you can click to go see the tool itself. It tells you how many records load per minute, um, what is right now there um, under auto load, so should be loading, what is pending, that means it has some other status besides auto load in the tool. And then um, this runtime is like what's happening now and cumulative is adding up all the run times for things that are running at any given time. Um, I think right now our component loaders are locked up um, because these things have been in here since last night and they're still not loading, um, but the other thing is if you load 10 things to the part loader and it's been two hours and they still haven't loaded, it could be because I have 50,000 things in the bulk load part attributes that are ahead of you. So the order here matters. Um, these things are going to load in this order, but you can move things. So I often jump in here. Uh, sometimes I come like, once a day, sometimes it's every other day, but just kind of take a look to see if somebody has these nine things um, that are behind somebody's 10,000 things. And I'll kind of move them around to let the lower numbers of things get loaded. Um, but you can do this too. If you have something that you need to get loaded now, and one of the things that people um, are usually concerned about are encumbrances. If you want your encumbrances loaded ASAP, move them to the top, scroll to the bottom and hit save. So it'll save the new order and the things at the top in number one will, will run first. Does anybody have any questions about this thing? Teresa, yeah, I've actually never looked at this. This is helpful. <laughs> um, when you click on the, the link under tool, um, does it, what does it show? Does it just show the stuff that is pending for your login or? No, it's showing everything, everything. everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is everything. So I just happen to know this is my junk in here because I loaded a whole bunch of stuff, but I think one, like these are Marielle's, I think, um, uh -huh. which if you go to the tool itself, um, which did it switch for you guys? Okay, so it goes to that form, I got it, yeah. Yeah, and then you can actually see what's in the tool. Gotcha, right, okay. I would just like to emphasize to remember to go to the bottom and save. It would be really nice if the save was at the top <laughs> um, with most of our tools um, because 
I frequently move things and forget to save. And then I'm like, why didn't that load? I only had one record. And then yeah. I realize, oh, I didn't save. There's a little so. button at the bottom. So probably uh, I can file an issue after this and say add a button at the top too. Okay. Um, yeah. Because it is true that you're usually ending up, yeah. up you're moving something up. So yeah, I wouldn't have known. To go I mean, I, I right. move things down sometimes because I, you know, I have these things. I know it's not a super hurry, but I know that, you know, maybe Derek has some taxonomy or something that he's wanting to get done. I'll just move mine down below everybody sometimes. So, but I think mostly you're moving something up to the top to get it, to get it finished. Yeah. You're trying to get a loan out or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, I mean, this is one way also to sort of check up on your things. Um, this column that says pendings, this is where Dusty finds these things that have been hanging around for a year, right? So like if, you, if I go to this bulk load loan items, I can see Mariel has some stuff in here. These are waiting to load. These don't have any status. So they're in the pending and these say catalog item not found. So they're in the pending. Um, sometimes people will, you know, put stuff in here, set it to auto load and then forget it and not come back. And it's very rare that you put a bunch of stuff in here, set it to auto load and it all loads. Um, there's almost always some record that has something wrong with it. Non-printing characters, um, an invalid date, something, something that winds up just stuck here. So whenever you make use of one of these tools, um, I always try to remind myself, like, I need to go back and see what's going on. But there's another thing that happens in your notifications. So um, I don't know if everybody's aware, but when you go up to your uh, login name, when you're logged in, there's this little notifications thing, which brings you to this screen. And these are all the things that used to come by email, you used to get all these emails about this, that, and the other, but now they're all here. Um, and if you come here and put pending data as a filter, hit go, um, it's gonna bring you the notifications about things that are pending in the component loaders. So it has everybody's stuff, um, but you can scroll around and look for your login name. And so you can see that in all these loaders, I have things um, that are sitting there waiting for something. So this is another way to sort of check yourself. Like, what do I have that's pending that I should probably follow up on? Um, and that's where you'll find the, oh, I loaded 50 things, but only 49 of them went. There's still this one kind of dangling there for whatever reason. Does anybody have questions about this thing? Teresa, is pending data a category that you can select or you have to know that that's the name of the subject? Uh, you you have to know. Um, and I asked Dusty, like, what's the best way to find this? And he said pending data. So, yeah, that's kind of this is the thing about the search on this form. There's not really like categories to pick. You're just sort of messing around. Um, I use this sometimes to look for agent related things. I just put agent in there and stuff pops up related to agents. Um, yeah, I maybe we could ask for some kind of like pick list here for the different types of notifications or something. I don't know. I don't know how I think that would be. That would be helpful or maybe just like a free, a free text as an option. So you, you know, well, but free yeah. text, it, I mean, you can type anything here. Yeah. But having a pick list where there were some mm -hmm. categories like, you know, unreciprocated relationships or things like that. So mm -hmm. you you can find those that would be helpful. Right. Right. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry, I missed the very beginning of this. How do you get to that spot where you can type in the pending data? You go to your look, your name, your login name up here in the corner and hit okay. notifications. Oh, and it brings so you to this, okay. to the notification okay. screen. Oh, excellent. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and you can, you know, you can, you can mark these things too. Um, the thing about the pending data one, I think it comes out once a month. So um, if you scroll through, like you'll find the next one. Oh, maybe it's once a week. Um, so it, it, it's, there's constantly a new one, but the, the newest one will be at the top. So that's the one I just go look at, like what's going on right now. 
Any other questions about that? Yeah, so Teresa, I'm kind of confused about, like I just as you were going through this, I looked at some of the pending data stuff um, for me. And it's like errors that I thought would be caught when the record was actually loading. Mm -hmm. It's like missing determiner, like attribute or like attribute invalid. Like that's the type of stuff that I feel like I normally like, Arctos is kicking it back and, back and not letting me load it because of errors like that. But now it looks like sometimes those errors are getting parsed out into pending data. Yeah, so it's it's so this is um, I think new since the new bulk loader, where mm -hmm. a lot of the things that used to just kind of load automatically. Um, they still do, but they're actually going through those component loaders, right? So you have places to put uh, 20 attributes there. I don't remember how many attributes mm -hmm. you can put. Um, but what happens with those is they go to that component loader and load from there. Okay. Um, so now that's where those kind of things are going to be caught. Okay. So yes, when even when you're just bulk loading through the main bulk loader, you can wind up with data in these component loaders um, that didn't load for reasons. That like you didn't receive an error for and it looked like it went through, but then to double check, you need to come here and yeah. see what got caught. Okay. Is that when you when you mark to load in the regular bulk loader and you say like include extras or yes. all the if yes. you click that, then it's going to anything that uh, doesn't fit will go through the component loaders. Mm -hmm. So if you, so yeah, if you, that's why those end up there from the main bulk loader. Yeah. And if you don't, you, if you just do the load, not load with extras, then all of your extras will go to the component loader, but they will not auto load. So you'll have stuff sitting there as well. So it's all going through those things. It's just that if you say auto load extras, then when it goes to the component loader, it gets the status gets set to auto load. So they start loading. Um, but yes, that's where it's going to catch the errors that are related to the things in the component loader. And what is what's considered extra? Um, so it's all the the long things, right? The all the attributes, the parts and their attributes. Um, mm. What's the other thing? Uh, identifications yeah uh, yeah like, if you have more than one like, identification um, and the um, identifiers too I think go through there now what about the locality attributes um, those go with the locality so I don't know I'm assuming that would do the same thing though I had one question too if you're um, okay so one thing if you're if you're bulk loading, maybe you should just always click yes, auto load extras. <laughs> I mean, um, that's what I do. I um, okay. Otherwise, you have to go to the individual component loaders and tell okay. those to load. Okay, we'll just click that from now on. Okay, my other question. So I do a lot of bulk loading of other things, like I bulk load barcoded barcodes that go with jars, that go with specimens and stuff like that. And so if the, will those show up in these notifications too? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So the things that you load directly in the component loaders, they are yeah. just all together in here. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Yay. And I'd like to make another comment too. If you if you mark auto load extras or or you don't, and there's something wrong, and you go to your component loader, you'll have this weird UUID, and you're like, where did this record come from? Why is this? here what does this mean how did it get here because it says i loaded it but it's coming from the main bulk loader at which assigns it a uuid to link it to the main data and then when those records load you end up with a uuid in your identifiers in your record right. and that's where that's coming from if you see the uuid in a record um you need to make sure that that uuid is not linked to something in a component loader that hasn't loaded yet um, because if you say, I don't know why this UUID is here as an identifier and you delete it, you break the link to any unloaded data that may be pending in the component loaders. 
just so that's how you can find it. You could take that UUID and search for it and say like, what what main record is this supposed to be associated with? You could find it by searching on the UUID as long as that's still associated with the record. But the UUID won't disappear once all, everything is loaded, right? No, nope. no, it it doesn't. I mean, you theoretically could get rid of it, if, but only if you are absolutely certain that all associated um, components are loaded to the record. Yeah, which I mean, in a way, that's easy enough by just making sure you don't have anything in the component loaders, as long as you were the one that did all the loading. <laughs> um, but I, those UUIDs aren't hurting anybody. I'd just leave them there. Any other questions or comments about this? All right, well, that was what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, Thank you. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, and the main reason I decided to do it is because, you know, I saw Dusty remove that older data, um, which, you know, he, he saved it. So if there's something there that's important to you that needs to get loaded, you can take it right from the files that he put in those issues.